In this video, I will be teaching you about Pascal's triangle and how it relates to binomial theorem. So we're all familiar with the expression a plus b whole squared is equal to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. And we can use this to also find what a plus b cubed is. When we solve for this, we get a plus b times a plus b whole squared, which is equal to a plus b times a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. And when we open this up, what we end up getting is a cubed plus 3a squared b plus 3a b squared plus b cubed. Now one thing I'd like to note about the way that I wrote this is that for a, the power is descending, descending. So we started a cubed, went to a squared, then a to the power of one, and then a to the power of zero. And in b, the power is ascending or going up. So we have b and then b squared and then b cubed. In a similar fashion, we can solve for a plus b to the fourth power. And what we end up getting with this is a to the fourth plus four a cubed b plus six a squared b squared plus four a times b cubed plus b to the fourth. So we can do this for greater and greater powers. So there can be a plus b to the fifth or a plus b to the sixth. But the higher you go, the harder the algebra gets. And in all honesty, doing this would probably take you upwards of 10, 15 minutes just because you have to do so many different calculations. But one thing that you start to notice when you put together all of the coefficients of these expressions is that for different powers of a plus b, we start to find a pattern. So in the first pattern, or in our first expression, we can say we have a plus b to the power of 1. We get a plus b, so the coefficients are just going to be 1 and 1. When we take a plus b whole squared, we get the coefficient 1, the coefficient 2, and the coefficient 1. So we get 1, 2, 1. When we take a plus b cubed, the coefficients are 1, 3, 3, 1. 1, 3, 3, 1. Now when we take a to the fourth, the coefficients that we get, so a plus b to the fourth power, the coefficients are 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. So we have 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. And some of you may already we already see the pattern that's happening over here. So what we end up seeing is that for each number, so let's say for example for 2, if you add the two numbers above it together then you get that number. So we have 1 and 1 that gives us 2. Over here we have 1 and 2 which gives us 3. 2 and 1 once again gives us 3. 3 and 1 gives us 4. 3 and 3 gives us 6. So we can actually expand this in order to find for higher numbers or higher powers of a plus b. So if we add these together, we get one on the side, then we get five over here, because one plus four, four plus six is 10, six plus four is 10, four plus one is five, and um, we just have one on the edge. So this will give us the values or the coefficients of a plus b to the fifth power. And what we end up getting is something called Pascal's triangle. So Pascal's triangle is essentially what we call this triangle that we just created by taking or by writing out the coefficients of different powers of a plus b. So up at the top, I guess we can just write one over here because that'll be a plus b to the power of zero equals to one. And this really just goes on and on and on. So if you want to do another line, you get one, six, 15, 20, 15, 6, and then 1, and you can go all the way up until if you want to find a plus b to the 100, you can find the coefficients by finding the 100th line 
of Pascal's triangle. Now there's a lot of interesting math behind Pascal's triangle and there's a lot of history behind it too. So for example, I believe a man named Omer Khayyam, he was an Iranian mathematician who invented it. So I'm not sure if he invented it, but he discovered it and it was called Khayyam's triangle. And then another man named, I think, Yang Hui in China discovered it. And in China, it's called Hui's triangle or Yang Hui's triangle. And in different countries, there are different names for the triangle based off of the scientist or the mathematician who discovered it. And Pascal, I think he came much later than the other mathematicians, but he made a lot of very important discoveries involving Pascal's triangle. So mathematicians have found some very interesting properties in Pascal's triangle. For example, using the triangle, they're able to derive the values of pi and e. I won't go over that in this video. I've actually linked a TED-Ed video about Pascal's triangle below. You can watch that if you're interested. Another interesting fact about Pascal's triangle is that um, when you highlight all of the odd numbers, you end up getting something that looks like this. And this is called Sierpinski's triangle. It's another mathematical fractal that I think is just really interesting and really cool. And there are a lot of properties to it. And I think to this day, mathematicians are still discovering new properties of Pascal's triangle. But for now, or in AdMath, we're mostly concerned with talking about Pascal's triangle in terms of binomial expansion. So in terms of these types of expansions. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we're actually able to use Pascal's triangle in order to find increasing powers of a plus b. So for example, if we want to use Pascal's triangle to find a plus b to the fifth, then all we have to do is just use these coefficients that we get from Pascal's triangle and then insert a and b in descending and ascending order. So remember up here, we wrote that we write it where with a, the power is descending and b, the power is ascending. So when we take a plus b to the fifth, the maximum power of a will end up being a to the power of five. So what we end up getting over here is a to the fifth. So we take the coefficient of one then we take the coefficient of five, we get plus five times a to the fourth uh, times b, then plus 10 times a cubed times b squared plus we have 10 again, so 10 times a squared, so a is decreasing, times b cubed, and b is increasing in power. Then we have five, so we get plus five a times b to the fourth, and then we have the power one, which corresponds to b to the fifth, so we get plus b to the fifth. And just like that, we were able to solve for a plus b to the fifth power without having to do any annoying or extremely long algebra. So in a similar manner, if we want to solve for a plus b to the sixth power, which we wrote out over here, all we have to do is take these as the coefficients and then write a in descending power and b in ascending power. And it doesn't really matter which one you put in which, like whether you start with b to the fifth or a to the fifth, because if you notice, if you just flip this around, you'll end up getting the exact same thing. So what we end up getting is a to the sixth, because a to the sixth is going to be the highest power of a that we get. And then plus six times a to the fifth times b plus we have 15, 15 times a to the fourth times b squared plus 20 times a cubed b cubed plus 15 times a to the uh, a, a squared times b to the fourth plus six times a times b to the fifth and then plus b to the sixth and once again just like that we were able to solve for this expansion without having to do any complex or extremely long algebra now one final property that i want to talk about for pascal's triangle is how it relates to combination so if you remembered in our chapter on combinations, on permutations and combinations, we covered something called NCR. So these, we call them combinations. And we say this as N choose R. So when you have N objects and you want to select R of them, this shows you the number of possible ways in which you can do that. And the way that we find NCR using Pascal's triangle is actually pretty interesting. So let's say that we want to find 
4, C, 2, or 4 choose 2. So we have four objects and we want to select two of them and we want to find the number of possible ways in which we can find those two. So what we do is we go down four. So we start, we go down one, two, three, four. So we're in the fourth row. And then we go over two to the right. So we go over one, two to the right. And the value of four C two is equal to six. Similarly, if we want to find 6c4, let's say. So let's erase this. We want to go down six, six rows. So we go one, two, three, four, five, six. We end up in this row. And then we want to go four to the right. So one, two, three, four. And what we end up getting is 15. So this is equal to 15. So if you think about this, it's really amazing. What we started out with was a plus b whole squared and a plus b whole cubed, and we ended up putting their coefficients together, and we got this sort of triangle called Pascal's triangle. And then Pascal's triangle allowed for us to solve even bigger powers of a plus b, so we were able to find a plus b to the sixth. And not only were we able to find that, we were also able to find combinations. So we were able to find a way to solve for n choose r or n c r. Now this may just seem like some sort of mathematical magic, but we're actually able to pretty simply or in a pretty simple way understand how this works. So to see this, we have to think of n choose r as the number of possible paths that we can take to reach a number. So for example, we have the number two. The number of possible paths are to go from one to one and then one to two, or on the left from one to one and then one to two. So there are two possible two possible ways of getting to two. So there are so we have the number two over here. Similarly for the number three, there are three possible ways to go there. So one way is like this along the side and then go to three. You can go from one, you can go from one to one to two to three. And the last way that you can go is to go from um, one to two to three. So there end up being three possible ways in which we can reach three. And similarly, if you're to look at four, you'll be able to find four different ways in which you can, we can reach this number. For six, there'll be six different ways. For 20, there'll be 20 different paths that we can take in order to reach this number. And that's how we understand why we get NCR from Pascal's triangle. So in summary, Pascal triangle allows us to find substitutions, or not substitutions, it allows us to find expansions of a plus b to the power of some number. So let's say we can find a plus b to the power of 100 by finding the 100th row of Pascal's triangle. And there are a lot of cool mathematical tricks around Pascal's triangle. I've actually linked a TED Ed video, I think I mentioned that earlier in the description. And if you're interested in this, then you can watch that video and there are a lot more resources online. There are a lot of resources online for this as well.